Let's take I a mean, look at LFO uh, roster lineup first, and then we're gonna go into detail with Toronto Defiant. Let's take a look at LFO first. Yeah, so the thing about LFO is, you look at this roster, and it is stacked. It is stacked. You got Mirror, yeah. obviously. You know, we, we know a lot about Mirror from his Overwatch yeah. League days. Liar obviously played in the Overwatch League uh, previously, so did MCD. Seeker, you know, a standout. You know, really putting in good work in the World Cup, for example. He was, I was on his team in Toronto when we beat Jake's team. That was a great time. Seeker, fantastic hits in the player. Yeah, the and also, Zero is someone I'm looking out for. To be a bit of a come up here. We, we're not that familiar with Zero. You know, hasn't had a ton of time in the professional Overwatch scene. But, you know, now building, building a name for himself here in Tier 2. I got the chance to observe some scrims. And I was really impressed by his Tracer player in particular. I believe he got player of the match in the group stage at one point as well. So that just tells you, when you're on a stacked team, like this alongside individuals like Seeker, Mirror, MCD, like Zero be getting player of the match, that just tells you how skilled he is. So, building a name for himself here, but they are going up against this is going to be look at this team. Yeah, this oh. team. Yeah, I don't oh, know any other teams. They look familiar. Gracious. <laughs> wow. We've got three Overwatch League champions from last season. We've got Sugar Free. Arguably, I think he was like second place for Rookie of the Year last season. I think that's pretty fair to say. Um, and then Vega, who is one of the hottest talents coming up out of North American Overwatch on the main support role. But honestly, these guys make stuff like main support obsolete, right? He, he actually does play all the supports in reality. We're going to see a ton of Lucio from him uh, just because that's where the meta is today. But I mean, these guys, five players on the team, they don't have subs and they don't really seem to need them. These guys can handle any hero on the highest level. This is truly a team built for Overwatch 2 um, and a team built to dominate the world. All right, let's take a look at the maps, and we're starting Ooh, things off with Elios. Elios, selected by Toronto. I'm what excited. are your thoughts on that? You know, I heard this from Cass, right? Uh -huh. He talked to us about this, about even though they look like one of the strongest teams, they know they're one of the strongest teams, they are still going to push for a bigger advantage and a bigger advantage. And so they are going to be the team who, even though they're dominant, they're still going to throw a wrench at you Aww. and still going to make you play maps that you might not have prepped on. Yeah. They're still going to, like, they want more. And I think that's exactly, that's the, the humility, really, that I want to see from these teams who, they want to, like, they Toronto's like aspirations down. are bigger. They want to like, yeah, exactly. Put it to the ground. Their aspirations are bigger than this. Of course, they want to win every game here, uh -huh. but they want to be going into the into the world championships, right? They want to be the best in the world. They want to go beyond NA, I think, more than any other team, really. Yeah. It's, it's clearly. I think that's there's something account. to be said that if everyone just plays Kings Row and Lee Jang Tower all the time, they're probably practicing those the most. So if you're a really good team like yeah. Toronto, ban those maps. Yeah. Play maps that people haven't practiced as much. So maybe that's the case here with Ilios. Oh, that's, that's good. It's, I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's jump right into our first match. And this match, it's going to be brought to you by Jaws and uh, Mr. X. Wow. Yes, I know. The, the, the unlikely did pairing. You forget this who is I was there for a second. <laughs> then, like, yeah, no, I, I'm going to be honest. I was like, Jaws and then I was like, who is he that guy? With? Who's that guy? Uh, okay, I was so, I was a custom. It was like, oh, it's not, it's not him. I was like, what? Yeah. Custom, no, your beard no. is fine <laughs> so well. It's really yeah. it looks it's great. The, the other the other Australian animal is Danny. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, what eighth or ninth casting partner now. Thank you, Matt. So I appreciate that. Thank you for joining me. It's been a yeah, great time. I mean, it, I didn't get forced uh, to do this it, at all. Didn't get forced. Not at all. Well, you you know, you look you look fantastic today. I I am wow. excited. I, oh I think God. I think we're gonna have. Yeah, that's it. Look, I I am very nice to Jaws always, and he's always <laughs> very. You just saw. He not was, true. He literally, was just mean. No, uh, so I th have this receipts be, this, from 2020 this all day. the way up until this, this year. Be Matt. A fun day. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun nah, day. That's that's uh, that's not true. That's not true. This will be a fun day. Uh, Toronto Defiant versus LFO. Like uh, I've actually been pretty impressed with the LFO team. I thought they yeah. performed quite well. Uh, it's just Toronto Defiant. I mean, you look at the roster. You expect <laughs> them to be on another level uh, in yeah. terms of what they're able to do. Yeah, dude, they got champions on their roster. Like, they said it perfectly well on the desk. Like, yeah, LFO, they've got a lot of talent and they always will do. No matter who you have on the team, it can really just pale in comparison to the Toronto team. Like, no matter who they face, it's like, okay, Toronto are going to have the advantage. Merit, someone, RuPaul, just champ, Sugar Free, is one of the most hyped players coming into the Tier 1 Overwatch space last year due to God. And Vega, was, uh, who was Jake, was uh, pointing out on the desk earlier on. On. It's another very, very hot prospect coming out of North America. And LFO, they got legends as well, like Liar, Seeker, Valiant Goats. I mean, Mirror's been around the scene for a long time. Same with MCD. A lot to prove here for, for Zera, I think, and for Vega. And this match will really start to prove it now as we are uh, Ilios, of course, Matt. Uh, we're going on to Ruins. We're seeing a little bit of Widowmaker, actually, from uh, Merit. 
Yeah, two completely different looks as uh, they try and put some pressure onto someone. It doesn't really work as they're able to just you know, run him down. Is I mean, he still got it. <laughs> it's, uh, just Don't silly worry. stuff here at the start. So like LFO, they go really aggressive, Jack. Obviously, the Sigma in the mix, you want to just run that target down. Uh, and they just get wiped up. I mean, it's not really that close. So uh, I'm going to set up the same thing here again. Uh, we'll s see if it's any better. Yeah, the Queen is actually a really interesting look for LFO. Not something we've uh, seen today. Of course, the meta did shift quite considerably after those Malga nerfs, after it was Perma Malga, but with uh, Zera already going down to a, a headshot from RuPaul, I mean, this is LFO just kind of falling over. They have to kind of int in, try and find additional kills, because a lot of their damage now missing. LFO taking a lot of damage in this corridor, and this spam coming out from Toronto to find is just a little bit too much for Mira, especially with that DPS passive mat. The flux comes out. I mean, it's all over, at least for this fight. Mira, Seeker down, same with Lia. Nice little stagger onto MCD there. Yeah, but Toronto just <laughs> diffing it for LFO right now. Uh, just the amount of damage that LFO takes just like crossing the point. Like they, they obviously need to get across the point, you know, put pressure on the Sigma. Uh, we get a clip from Mir there from, I mean, Zero just did again. Uh, you know, watching from Mir's POV, uh, he gets across the gap of the point. Oh, which they're probably like, great, we're here. He's at like 100 HP at the time, as I mean, this is just... Uh... Is, it, what, is this OD? Is this like round one in the, the bracket, in the Swiss bracket? Toronto well, Defiant almost so small little. camping him. We've seen so little of the Defiant uh, because they just keep beating everybody terribly uh, <laughs> yeah. that you were like, all right, this is going to be a game, right? You know, Overwatch League players on the other side here. Uh, and so far, it's been a been a good old fashioned spawn camp. Good old fashioned stomp. Okay, Queen Oak coming up. They got the rush to utilize first, and there it goes. They do rip it. Rupal's holding on to his. Mr. Toronto to find. Do end up just retreating slightly, giving over the point. And now it's only one fight. Someone is going to be the target for LFO. Lyre tries to get in there and help his team speed forward. But Toronto to find instantly use that rush to try and turn the tide. A sound barrier onto four for LFO as they do dash to the skies to take care of Merit. And eventually they do find the team wipe. Or close to. Looks like Vega's going to get out alive, but it'll do but somehow uh, someone sugar free still come up with kills of vega too an overextension from lfo uh, overextended looked like miles toronto to fight were as good as dead bat but lfo have come back yeah i mean uh, toronto to find just... back all the way back up to their spawn they are still just oh kind of battling God. back in this is, uh, that that's a first round uh if we've ever had one right there as uh you know if there are any questions about how the defiant would look against a team I uh, don't no, like LFO or like some of the other teams in NA that you think can kind of play up at the same level. Uh, I think uh, at least that first round is a pretty convincing answer. That is demonic stuff from Toronto Defiant. I mean, that demonic stuff. Demonic. Okay. Yeah, you like that one? You like that one? Been yeah, playing a lot of Doom one. recently. Yeah, I gotta, so, I gotta tell Mitch to add that one to yeah. his vocabulary. Oh no, I stole that one from him probably at some point. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, that just shows how much I listen to that guy. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the same could be said for him to you, to be fair, Matt. I'm going to be honest with you. All right, Mal. Yeah, okay. it's incredible. We're, this we're is like Neuralink's connected, but telekinesis, right? After I mean, that, that many years, it wouldn't surprise me. Here we go. Maga Wars. And Tor. This is what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> Maga, Maga Torb. Oh, yes. I'm in it. Not for the Malga, but for the Torb. I mean, look, Seeker's done it before. Maybe he can do it again, but Torb just suffers here, man. Uh, you don't get dived that easily. Uh, so Toronto Defiance comp's going to be a little bit harder to kind of execute onto the Torb, but I mean, you're just going to get poked out before you even touch the point. Yeah, and I mean, Maga just needs to use his just physical body to just create <laughs> space, you know, enter the point. Uh, you know, it, <laughs> the, the Maga diet is just eating just raw cake batter out of the bin. Yeah, he just exactly. sharks on in there. Big slam just down. Just raw cookie dough and bullets. Like, that's all he eating right now. Nice little Susie to kind of keep the Malga alive. But the point is going to flip over in just a moment. It's trying to define end up capping. Mira down. Yeah, Malga front line. Uh, on a little bit more of a diet now back in the spawn as Toronto cap and they got a duplication ready to go straight off the rip here. They could go super quick if they wanted to. 
And the, the, the one thing that's been, uh, you know, obviously the Defiant extremely impressive is it looks like they've actually caught Zero out here, so they'll uh, finish this off. Is that like, it seems like whatever LFO is running, like the Defiant just don't really care. Like, right, they're just, right. just like, like they're not going to switch. We're just going to like figure it out. As, uh, you know, Mirror just taking damage from all oh. different directions. They just get a focusing beam and take him out. Oh, here we go. Maybe, right. maybe something here for LFO. Straight Cheeto there from uh, Seeker. Let's find Merit's head at least. There is a rush here available for MCD. Could definitely help getting many cardiac overdrives down. Both rushes already been used. There's the turret. It's already gone, so uh, Seeker's gonna have to find another position to land that one in. Oh yeah. Although, look at this. <laughs> it's just Malga <laughs> in the rush is hilarious, but unfortunately Sugar Free lets their health pool, of course, oh. with uh, their ultimate, the copy. Lai gets a nice boop onto someone, but Toronto Defiant still controlling the point. Everybody from Toronto right now just barreling on there to get some additional percentage. They do get 60 after that uh, engagement and LFO don't use too many ultimates for this uh, for that last fight so at least got a pulse bomb maybe to weave in there maybe pick off Vega yeah I think if you see that the defiant like leap in right you know mirror at this point you know you're gonna be able to build up that uh, cage fight pretty fast you could like cage fight torbolt players inside of it I uh, know oh, looking at wait the forbidden combo like, someone the cage and the molten core the forbidden combo Pulse Bomb in the Merit's hands. He's currently playing a little bit of watch over uh, Seek and Zero right now. He's getting checked a little bit. Same with Liar, who jumps into the sky. He's trying to look for him, but Sugar Free almost takes him down. There's the Pulse Bomb thrown out. It does end up hitting the floor, as I hear the Molten Core's been ripped too. Looks like it's a bit more of a space creation rather than a uh, paired with a cage there, as LFO continue to kind of juggle the points. Mirror, full HP though. Luckily enough, that Molten Core, enough for Toronto to be dissuaded at least somewhat in this engagement. Uh, and this point just goes like contested for ages, right? So the fact that you're up to 50% here for LFO, you're probably going to end up taking the lead. And that time they actually catch someone inside of that cage. So finishes off that tank there of the Defiant. And uh, now maybe Maga is not as dead as we thought. Uh, <laughs> may maybe, maybe he's still got a little bit of life left in him. No, no, no. Surely not. Surely not, he says, clueless. Look, I mean, if you've got the cage and uh, you're just waiting for someone to engage, it's a pretty easy kill. Someone's going over to the Doomfist now, Bull Picks. Not bad. Uh, don't mind seeing that one whatsoever. Sugar Free almost falling over, but duplication is available. Someone goes pretty low. Focusing beam on the Tracer, narrowly missing him. But Vega gets a massive boop onto Mira, who tried to make their way to the back line, back line by the looks of it. A good tuning rush for both teams now as Toronto to fight, try and settle this score. A Pulse Bomb blocked out by someone's Power Fist. And with Merritt and RuPaul cleaning up, this is LFO getting near 99% as Toronto find the flip eventually. Yeah, and the bad part for LFO is they've used just about everything here. So Cassidy swapped, kind of go about that Doomfist on the other side. Uh, the, you, I mean, you're reliant on a sound barrier here. This is probably going to be the only ultimate you have the rest of the game here for LFO. So uh, bad use of this ultimate, and you're going to drop map one. I mean, the economy is looking good for Defiant, the opposite of 2008. They got copy, they got pulse, they got beat. Only against LFO's beat, like you said, Matt. And Vega even may be looking for another cheeky boop on Mirror. That would definitely uh, help turn the tides. Pulse Bomb for Merit here as Overtime does approach. And MCD already dead, already caught out. Pulse Bomb does go wide, but it doesn't matter. The main source of healing for LFO is now dead. They have to pull the beat early and another boot. But this time it's Liar, someone off the map, down the well, I presume. Mirror does end up also falling, but it's all good. Toronto don't have a tank, but they got a dupe. Seeker there on the cast, trying to stall out for longer as Liar comes back in to get the retouch for OT. But MCD only now just making it back. Zera does die to the Sticky Bombs, and that should just be it that will be toronto defiant taking that game quite easily Matt. like that didn't look that close i thought this would be way closer lfo have got some legends on their uh, team as well but i mean toronto are just head and shoulders above the rest right now i mean maybe there's a possibility where if lfo gets a map that you can play uh no uh, just kind of boots on the ground some you know just play play the maga maybe there's yeah. a shot there uh, but yeah, I mean, Toronto, there, there's nothing surprising about this. There also shouldn't be anything surprising about this. I mean, they have like a, a stacked roster, you know, they're, they're probably like able to play in the same vicinity of each other, right? Like there shouldn't really be a surprise, like with this talent, 
uh, they should uh, live up to the expectations. Yeah, oh, 100, like three champs on the team. Like, what more can you really yeah. ask for going into a brand new format, a brand new season of competitive Overwatch? Toronto Defiant look great. I mean, LFO, 40 falling by the wayside here, but, you know, map choices coming up next, of course, Matt. We'll have to wait and see where we do end up want to go because I missed the screen from before. And it's Hollywood, actually. I'm just looking at the lower third. It's that's, Hollywood. It's that's literally on your works. screen. Uh, okay, in my defense, the screen's a little bit far away. My eyesight's fine, but... You know, we're all good. Let's have a look at uh, some highlights from the last, that, yeah. that last map, though. Because especially on this first point, <laughs> like, Merit just plays Widow. And yeah, if anybody did forget, he can aim extremely well, by the way. And I mean, this was just a shutout. When you're moving backwards that close to the spawn, you, you're never in a great position, I feel like. <laughs> That's... Uh, nobody has moved backwards. <laughs> Put nobody that has on... held S towards the spawn and been in an advantageous position. Put that uh, on that a is... statue. Yeah. That's an inspirational uh, yeah, quote right there. Yeah. Anybody who held S from this point on was losing the fight. Uh, as we get the duplicated uh, MAGA here at the end here for Sugar Free, just for, uh, you know, just, just to add insult to injury pretty much is a nice finish, finish off there just, uh, just towards the end. Uh, like these KDs are going to be pretty lopsided in a lot of these. Yeah. Uh, this is This is very lopsided. Uh, you know, the, the damage mitigated is kind of funny. Uh, I know Maga's, Maga's physical being doesn't count towards this damage <laughs> yeah. mitigation. That would actually just contribute to the damage dealt on the opposing side. Yeah, it would be the exact same number as the damage dealt. I mean, yeah, I mean, the damage mitigation. Maybe Kardec Overdrive counts for some of that. Not sure. But we are going to Hollywood. Like you said, Matt is our next map. This is LFO's choice. Are they going to still run the Mauga? Because is Mauga that dead? I know a lot of teams were also running the Orissa before the Mauga kind of um, exploded in to the scene and just kind of blew the whole meta wide open. Like, a lot of teams are playing the Orissa, and then people are like, oh, maybe Orissa is actually better than Mauga right now in certain maps or, or with certain teams as well. Like, Oh, it's, it's tough to say, but if LFO have been practicing this one comp like for the last couple of weeks, like maybe they just stick with it because that's what they got most practice on. Well, so MAGA got buff, right? And then they reverted the buff uh, to MAGA, but they still changed the DPS passive in that time, right? right? Uh, which that is still a pretty, you know, consider like pretty sizable change. So like, I think everybody saw the, you know, the MAGA, like the, the unkillable god, you know, the the cardiac overdrive and everybody's at 100 HP, probably dead. Uh, but MAGA being pretty good, you know, the amount of damage that he can output uh, and then also the survivability, right? You reduce the DPS passive, but then you add, you know, to the other team a way to generate more HP, like it's still going to be pretty viable, right? Uh, you just yeah. might not be unkillable. Yeah, and he's still good at, like, kind of just sitting there tanking damage, like you said. And he's he's not, like, perfect against the dive, but you saw there with the Winston on a well, it's like, okay, I dive it, or oh, insta-cage, and that's, like, an instant kill, right? He's very good at, like, isolating one person, just or maybe a couple of people, and just blowing them up. So maybe there is a bit of viability there, but for Hollywood, it's like... Uh, you just, I think you just want to run dive uh, on uh, first and second, like maybe third you run the Malga, but I don't know. You can probably run it like first on defense. Sure. Uh, but after that, if you're just going to give up the high ground and just be like, you know, mogging out down there on the <laughs> low ground, uh, you're, you're not going to be in a great spot. Uh, you know, g giving up, uh, although it's Overwatch and everybody rages at like loads of different things, giving up the high ground is still terrible. Uh, you need to control that. Like, it's just kind of a staple of any shooting game uh, where if you give that up, you know, if you set the mug up on the high ground, maybe you do some crazy stuff. But uh, no, you're going to need some uh, ability to get some verticality. Yeah, looks like we are jumping to a quick momentary not break we're going into the game actually a quick game a quick game potentially. Yes. we're going to <laughs> we're going to a quick game will it be a quick game Toronto to fight made that first one look pretty quick Hollywood uh, coming up on screens in just a second yeah I mean maybe you run the Malga on first point defense but dude they, they just gotta run the dive it feels like I mean Winston it's funny actually I was talking to uh, Jake and Johnny in the in the green room just a minute ago it was like everything just leads back to Winston at some point. Like we have these sustain and brawl metas, rush metas, whatever, but eventually everything ends up Winton. And honestly, not mad about it at all.
Because everybody's had like thousands of hours playing him at this point. Yeah, exactly. And he's fun. He's cool, man. Like he goes primal. He hits people. It's pretty wicked. It's pretty sick. What's wrong? You know, Maga pops cardiac overdrive and is pretty much in primal at that point. <laughs> uh, yeah, he felt like it feels like he does have about a thousand plus effective HP. Uh, immortal it's a, is definitely a word. So what do we got here? Uh, you know, we, we, we lose a little bit up top. Okay, there we go. We're back. So uh, Defiant on defense, they just kind of key running Sigma. Uh, right. Nothing wrong with the Sigma, especially being able to control high ground. LFO, no, screw it. We, we played this all weekend last weekend. Let's just keep going. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like the name of the game. And obviously, with the with the Sim, don't mind it at all, especially if you're kind of knowing you're going, going against a more static tank in the Sigma. You can teleport on to the cafe. Yeah, it's exactly what they're going to do. But quick rotation there for someone, but not <laughs> enough, not quick enough uh, to save RuPaul. Wow, their backline is uh, mincemeat. <laughs> RuPaul just needs to fast. try to live better, you know? Just, mm -hmm. <laughs> just needs to... You should, I can't believe he didn't outplay that Damn, there. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's there's, crazy. Uh, th there's, not, there's literally nothing he can do. <laughs> I mean, the teleporter comes down, just a huge slam from the Maga. Like, before you could even get out, like, an immortality field or something, you're just dead. Uh, is still able to put down some damage. RuPaul now comes back on the Ana there. Biotic Grenade going to force back LFO just a little bit. They're so close to Cap'n, though. Yeah, without someone, I don't think this is doable. Maybe if they killed the Mauga there, Mira, yeah. uh, it might have been might have been doable but um unfortunately not Toronto if i do end up losing that first point and yeah i mean who needs a big leap from a big winston when you have just a teleporter to teleport well, the mauga around the map so what kind of like ruined lfo there we talked about it on the first point on ilios like against the sigma they were playing queen at the time but like you couldn't close the gap without you know the queen basically just taking her full bar of hp like down to zero uh the sim allows you to just teleport the maga around and get him into spots where he can be extremely effective uh this is important they got to control the high ground here uh so you get a mirror set up they're just putting down some damage denying that space from the defiant it's still so tough for the Maga, like you said. It's just an old battery. Whoa, oh, okay, Mirror, wrong way, wrong way, turn around. Oh, fake. Cardiac <laughs> overdrive as they do run it down with the rush. That was kind of funny. MCD uh, does help Mirror come up with a kill on Sugar Free. But uh, there is the cage. Caging the Sigma as the Sigma's ulting. What a worse place for Sig to be. Don't worry, though, because he got Nano. He's surviving, at least for a moment, as Mirror does dash out of there. Cage does end up falling apart as uh, Toronto to fire. And wondering what just happened. They are going to resume control of the high ground. The LFO are going to continue to move the payload. Wall here for Seeker, though. Could be a bit of a difference maker. Stops a lot of that poke hitting Mirror. You know, though, this is how you win if you're LFO. You just make the game a little bit silly, right? Uh, nice Suzu there. It looks like that protected that, that pulse bomb connection. As uh, me are not going to be able to live through that. I mean, they, they use just about everything to try and make it happen. Anti-rock. And honestly, I'm a big fan of this Arna pick. Arna's not uh, seen a crazy amount of play um, over the last couple of metas. But, I mean, RuPaul, world, literal world champion, like world class Arna player. But it also kind of dominates the Maga, although I say that it looks like RuPaul is kind yeah. of switching up he now which you. is kind of sad. I was going to say he heard you yeah. talk about how much you liked oh, it and uh, that sucks. Well I don't mind it against the uh, Malgor at all. Kiriko a little bit more mobile. I think he's kind of scared as well that what would happen to him on first point would happen to him now where he just gets TP'd on and insta dies so not too shocked there to see him switch over to the, t uh, to the Kiriko so he doesn't get TP'd on. Here comes the wall. TP up to the high ground for RuPaul. Duplication available from Sugar Free. Just trying to wait this wall out now. You don't want to get split up from the rest of your team, nor the heels. There we go. Wall down. Expect an engagement in just a moment, I'd imagine. Seeker and Sugar Free. They do end up trading there. His blades available from Zera. Still pretty low. Spots the Doom in the skies. Uh, misses the Kiriko there. Azupal blinks away. Still with that blade in hand. Maybe wants to wait for uh, everybody to bunch up on the payload first before they end up doing anything. So he's just trying to find kills and trying to find people to slice away at. And there you go. Vega already down. High in the sky is Sugar Free. Dupes the Genji of all characters. Oh. A free blade on the horizon, perhaps, but I don't think you're going to survive all too long as Mirror's got something to say about it right at your back. But that duplication, I would say, wasted somewhat. Yeah, I was surprised he used it, uh, considering, you know, how many players down they were, but it looks like that LFO's forced to back up. A few of their players also fall here. So you're very close to a second point completion. 2.15 is a really good amount of time to have. So when they see the Doom on the other side, they decide to now go Sombra. Sombra available from Vega. 
Doesn't want to get randomly insta-killed by this uh, rush. Still got the sound barrier, though. Can use it whenever they choose. Someone needs desperate help, though. There's the Suzu Vegas. Got to use it. Hits it. Only hits four, though. As someone ended up going down. Vega a little bit too late on that one. Mira is going to get chased. Sly is going to help uh, Mira get away, at least for the time. This rush doing a lot of work, though, for Sugar Free. Just pumping up those damage numbers. That beam is just way too much for the Genji. And the Mauga, to be fair. Like you pointed out a minute ago, Matt, uh, the beam from the Echo is just ridiculous against a lot of these targets that are just so susceptible to it without shields. Yeah, they do have to layer, though, the rush and the sound barrier on top of each other to end up winning that fight. And then you think Seeker, you know, can just kind of poke around, do some damage. Liar, you know, can just kind of farm his MAGA up. Uh, and you can get, what, sound barrier, cage, and uh, EMP here when the cart's basically at the goal line. So I still think LFO in a pretty good spot to capture this point. There's the cage from Mirror, but it might just be a death sentence. So you did get taken pretty low. Luckily, the heals are incoming. Still it stops uh, Toronto to fight, making a big engagement. EMP comes out. Seeker trying to teleport as fast as they can away. EMP was good, but where's the kills? Someone's going to come back in just a moment. Here's the sound barrel from Liar. This should surely be it. Mira still ends up going down to Sugar Free, although. And uh, with 2.71 meters to go, someone's still going to be able to stall this one out. Just one pick is all they really needed. With MCD dead, Liar really hasn't got any say in this fight whatsoever. Zara with a pulse bomb almost, almost gets the click kill onto Merit, but has to hit the recall before he can. 30 seconds to go as Toronto to fight miraculously hold on to that oh, point. They kind of fumbled that a little bit. I mean, they needed to kill Sugar Free. So he's just kind of like sitting above the point, just putting down so much free damage and they're not able to do so. They lose Mir quite early. Now, you know, it looks pretty good for LFO. Turns into a pretty terrible scenario. Is uh, just the Pulse Bomb available? You think that could get Suzu though by RuPaul? Seeker is the one to touch here, tries to get the hack on the Tracer, but Mera does not allow for it. That's a little virus throw there, it did end up missing, but here comes Mira. Pulse on available from Zerus, the only old LFO I've got right now. The stick from Mera, though, will send Mera pretty low. Seeker also pretty uh, close to death. Sugar Free and RuPaul are just going to be able to clean this one up. Just the overwhelming amount of ultimates. Apparently, they didn't even need the sound barrier to end that one. MCD's rush coming on just a little bit too late at the very end as Toronto Defiant make a hell of a stand on point B there. I mean, what? Uh, almost two minutes and 30 seconds for LFO to take that where they basically had it right at the checkpoint. Uh, and they're not able to get it over the line. So better performance uh, from LFO, uh, right? That's kind of what we wanted to see them uh, you know, come out, play a little bit better than we saw in Ilios, although up against a tough opponent. Uh, and they did, uh, just not enough in the end. Uh, I'm curious against like a team that like hard, you know, commits to, you know, MAGA, like you are seeing the MAGA have success uh, against right. like the Sigma, I even think against the Doom, like a team that is just basically saw the hotfix and just said, screw it. Like, we're just going to keep just running it down. I uh, you know MAGA, MAGA, Sim, whatever, uh, and see how they perform. Because I actually think you'd probably still see them do quite well. Yes, yeah, so especially if you play the Sim. I think Sim, especially on these kind of maps, is just so strong with the TP. And then you have the speed as well. I mean, you saw how they executed on point A. Like, they just TP onto the back line. And the thing is, Toronto Define were ready for it too. They were so ready. Someone like rotated as Sig up to Cafe to try and help his support, but it just didn't matter because they blew him up too quick because Mauga just charges in, hits everybody with a stun, and that was it. I want to see if Toronto is still going to run this, though. I mean, Arissa, it makes the most sense. Honestly, uh, people, like I said before, people were playing Arissa um, with, uh, or sorry, yeah. with uh, and against the Malga, and it felt like Arissa was eventually going to win the meta war out between the two picks. So, I mean, Toronto to fight, thinking on their feet, changing things up. Yeah, uh, going with the Sojourn as well, I think probably just had merit in the spawn, kind of like which, you know, hit scan or tracer are you going to see you know, him come out on. But He's gonna, you know, mirror Seeker as uh, you know, wants to put a little bit of pressure on that high ground. Look at this. I mean, LFO just cuts right Shit, around. Someone shoots Zara. Zara is in your back someone. line. Zara is in your back line. Someone shoot this man. Okay, eventually he ends up going down. Merit and RuPaul are able to pick up some kills. Seeker ascending to the high ground now. Spots Merits. This should be Seeker's death. There we go. Quick as you like. Toronto to find. Even though they let Zara live a little bit too long there, they do end up pushing on forward and someone getting back momentarily this should just be the cap looks like lfo recognize that they're not going to go for anything crazy here 
it, it feels like the echo has been so good uh, for the Defiant th throughout the series thus far. Is uh, looks like Sugar Free just takes some shots. Uh, Mir has been the one who's like on the on the side of LFO who's been like able to get a few kills onto the echo, like put pressure with that Maga, right? You know, you land the left clicks, you know, they land a few right clicks, and the damage just kind of starts to scale. Uh, now the Defiant, though, they realize they need to kind of take this high ground. So that's why you have someone go over to the Doom here. Uh, and really what they're probably discussing is like how to win just kind of like one fight, you know, quote unquote, like naked, right? Not really use a ton and then have a lot of ultimates. The next one. Look at how this is pushing ridiculous. Them, ridiculous. What is going what, on? What is going on? <laughs> what is blood doing in the they just, they, just they just swap sides. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Vega did a very good job of surviving there. And you yeah, they zoned out the Lucio, over. though. <laughs> they did. They definitely zoned out the Lucio. Well, Matt, they're all yeah. dead. Um, there you go. Don't need too much analysis up into that one. They're going to push the payload. That was pretty effective for the Defiant. Uh, I was <laughs> mentioning how they needed so. to win a fight without really kind of using anything. <laughs> uh, just being like given the payload and just kind of like turn the opposite side of the map. Uh, I, not exactly I obviously what LFO wanted. They probably wanted that kill on Vega, but he just went so far back that there was no reason oh. to continue to push. Oh, that's a nice shot there from Seeker. Yeah, good kill. All right, it's going to halt the silliness for now. Don't worry, it will be back. Four minutes to go. Mer I don't think Merritt's going to be able to continue holding this high ground. No, I guess forced off. But still with the pulse, still pretty nice. They can just ult dump here, Matt. All they need to do is just run into the... Okay, well, ult dumping to the floor. That's not exactly what I meant, Merritt, but all good. You might die too. If you die here, I mean, that's another big stagger. Ooh. Overclock from Seeker. Okay, you're not too mad about this, honestly. Merit ends no. up dying late. You have to go for the reset anyway, plus Seeker uses Overclock. Okay, not 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 the worst. And I mean, you have an eternity, right? 3.30. Right. Uh, no, 3.30 to go what? That's like uh, you know, 19 meters. Math. No, uh, Math's like gone. 20 something meters. Yeah, so. something like that, Matt. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. But it, it's a. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, you know, look at this. I mean, they're going to get across. Like, you can't keep letting someone just put pressure on the cart and then just, what are you going to do here? Zero gets really low. They're going to need that blade. He needs to stay alive. Cardiac Overdrive, but Seeker's already dead. Duplication on the Malga and a beam for Vega. Lias B's going to have to just save the whole team, but unfortunately only saves three. Blade's been pulled, but Zero's already low. Sugar Free with a billion HP and then some on the Malga is going to unlock a free cage in just a moment too, but they don't need it. All good. Toronto Defiant end up taking map number two. LFO. They are just not showing up today, man. But I also think this is just Toronto to fight really just well, being that much better than the competition. Yeah, I mean, the LFO had a tough time in groups, if you remember. Uh, they went right, to 3-2 yeah. against Citrus Nation. They ended up, like, absolutely dunking on them the next week. But that was, you know, when the meta switched, you know, from everything we had to MAGA, right? So maybe Citrus Nation just didn't have a lot of time, where uh, now LFO, he thought maybe with some more time, they'd be able to ramp up a little bit. Uh, they are just running into a, a, a buzzsaw, though, head on. Uh, I mean, this is not not the best matchup here for round one. Yeah, really not the best. A 2-0, just like that. I mean, maybe LFO can kind of come back, but have they got anything else in their back pocket? Anything else in the armory? Like, are they going to pull out something that's not the Malga? Because yeah. right now, Toronto Defiant, just on equal, they're just kind of different. You probably feel like the Mog is the best way to go about it. Right. Uh, I mean... Like if you're if you're LFO, you're like, oh yeah, let's play you know Winston v Winston against like someone. Like yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah that's, you that's don't want to do a that. A great idea, right? Yeah. Like you know the, like I feel like the Mog is the best chance in terms of like change the game and like the pace of play and you know maybe maybe have them come away with a you know a win or keep some maps closed, which they are. You know at least with this uh, you know Hollywood map, it was pretty competitive. I think that they had a few opportunities to take this second checkpoint. They just kind of fumbled them. Yeah, exactly that. That was a, a miracle hold, it felt like, from Toronto on that second point. Okay, Esperanza is our next map. Again, you can still play the Malga. I still think he's going to be viable, especially with the Sim. And like I mentioned before, I really like the Sim, but the adaptations also that Toronto made, Echo and Soj, especially at the start, oh, it's just so easy to get free rail guns. Uh, Echo also does a billion damage against the Malga because there's no shield, nothing to stop her from really just raining hell from above. It's, it's, a, it's a rough time. Yeah, as uh, we take a look at some of the stats uh, a little bit closer in terms of all the metrics across the board. Uh, 
It's just uh, I mean, easy to run though. It's like uh, the the less healing, more damage. I mean, just getting these fights done so fast oh, yeah. in favor uh, in their favor. So uh, to go up 2-0, to say this is a, a surprising result, it would not be. Uh, no, without good, the defiant. Uh, no, have been so far this year in these players historically. Uh, and I think it's good that we get to see them, right? I think a lot of people were like, oh, no, it's going to be Toronto. They're going to fumble it somehow, whatnot. But like, no, they've they've looked awesome. Yeah, they've, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Did, did you get that one from Matt, uh, from Mitch as well? Awesome. That's a good one, Matt. I think that's new to your what? vocabulary, no? The word awesome. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of letters, you know, mm, so... Mm. Uh, you know, your max had, is normally around a, five, so that's why it surprised think me. Think a, a while bit. on that one. Yeah, uh, we're gonna jump know, to sometimes, uh, sometimes a five, or usually usually keep it around th three or four. Three you know? or four, yeah, that 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 <laughs> checks out. He normally sticks with the word great a lot. Uh, watch out for that one. We're gonna jump to a quick break though. Teams are just setting up for the Esperanza. We'll be right back. Everybody's in the lobby. They're ready to rock and roll. Esperanza, map number three. Oh man, is this a Toronto map? It's, uh, the way this series is going so far, it feels like it. Now that's a, that's a bold statement you made there. I know, it's crazy. I'm, I'm one for predictions. But the way this series is going, mm. Toronto, <laughs> Toronto might win. It might win, yeah. Uh, I play it like Johnny. I play really safe to make sure that I can get the Preds right at the end of the season. I was watching earlier and Johnny, Johnny made a point and then Jake kind of like somewhat disagreed and then Johnny immediately was like yeah I agree with Jake I was like wait what just happened I was like did he just you know just brainwash you he's a he, all right LFO is gonna bro. try flip flop gonna try the Arisa here okay uh, so uh hey we need to make a little bit of a change let's go Arisa Arisa's uh I know the terror search uh gets buffed I believe uh in the, this last patch so to see how it fares against the Doom. Uh, you know, the, the Arisa has been actually pretty good against the Doom, uh, you know, in, in the past, but this is not something that the Defiant, you know, have never seen before, right? I imagine they're gonna have to figure out a way to play around it. Yeah, historically pretty decent. Doom goes to the block, you in with a spear. Jobs are good, and you can also get him off your back line too with a spear spin. So. You, you wanna hear a crazy stat? Go Just for got it. posted uh, sure. you know, in, our, in our Discord. Uh, someone died more in map number two versus LFO than he did throughout all of groups. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> all of groups? Dude. Yeah, he had six six deaths on Hollywood and he had four in all of groups. Oh my god. Wait, he's just that different? Holy. That is a, that is a crazy stat there. That is disgusting. He really is him. All right, LFO doing what their comp does best, and that's sit on the point. But, uh, I mean, Toronto Defiant are making them kind of work for it here. It's hard for LFO really to find an engagement. They need Seeker to kind of rip someone's head off first, and then they can push on. But Toronto, they're happy to just farm ults here. Sugarfree's close to that dude. Yeah, and it's, uh, Toronto, you know, wants LFO to try and push into them with the Arisa. Like, that's not the strength of this composition, right? And, like, kind of play a little bit of, like, a counter dive almost set up as... 
Zero gets in, gets sugar free quite low. Uh, that's not going to give them any more space though on the map. Yeah, and with that recall happening too, you know you can kind of step up. There's the dupe, it's on the Orisa. Vega's actually the first one to fall though. Early Suzu as both rushes are ripped on the point. So the 5v6 making a three on five as Merit also ends up going down. First ult be damned apparently. Toronto to find. She's getting steamrolled right now as LFO take it in their stride. A complete team wipe and no deaths on their side. And they get the ball going. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you, uh, for the Defiance, right, if you were able to have Vega live, you get Sound Barrier, kind of like extend that a little bit more, but losing that Lucio first, I mean, that is a, a really big blow there as LFO playing a little bit more defensive. It's going to actually work out for them. They're going to get the car moving. Yeah, Seeker's got this rail gun now as well. Vega desperately needs this Sound Barrier. you got to think if you're LFO, you know Vega's not going to be uh, on par with Liar. Oh my god, RuPaul just got destroyed. Attempt to spear, uh, spear there from Merit does end up going wide, but I mean, the ult was really the thing that uh, won them that fight. Toronto Defiant, yeah, not able to contend with this Orisa. I mean, someone's Doomfist, it, someone as a player himself, exceptional, but the Doomfist into the Orisa, this is really tough for them. And because LFO won that first fight, man, they just pull ults early, and then they might get a checkpoint as well. Yeah, I mean, the longer these fights go, right? I uh, know the better it's going to be for LFO. Oh. Like with the Doom and the, the Doom Echo Tracer combination, like you need to go in, go burn one of these two targets down, you know, really fast. And that's how you're going to kind of win these fights. You know, the more prolonged fights, and especially when LFO can play defensive, uh, it's definitely going to work out for them. That's a recall force uh, quite early. Yeah, it means Merrick can't go for any funny business with his pulse bomb. Someone just punching towards Merit there, just uh, tried to get out of the way of Mirror. They've got to try and take this high ground control away from the Orisa, but oh, it's actually Seeker falls down to low ground. A potential boob there from Vega to dislodge the Sojin. And now Merit is going to look two different ways. Look at the payload, then look at the split members of LFO who have managed to find themselves in the mega health pack room. I mean, Mirror dead, Sugar Free picking up a nice few kills there as they regain control of that bot. LFO just got completely split as Seeker ended up falling first. Yeah, and I think the worst part here for LFO is that Toronto Defiant comes back with five ultimates in this next fight. Uh, you didn't get that. Uh, you got really close to that checkpoint. It looks like uh, they got it right before it. Uh, they did get it. Okay, they did end up getting it in the end. So uh, getting the checkpoint's pretty massive, right? Uh, but, you know, now kind of you know, running into, like if you just trade support ults here, you figure that Toronto Defiant, like, you know, comes out on top of everything else in the end. And they've got the cart in a position, the bot in a position where you, know, you win this next fight, you're probably probably going to beat LFO in terms of meterage. It's going to be quite tough for them to kind of break the small chokehold here without just uh, throwing ults at the problem. But like you said before, the longer this fight lasts, the longer LFO have got a chance to build up some ults of their own. There's the engagement. Someone in, in the back line. Seeker already just eviscerated. Those pulse bombs just tearing him limb from him. That beam as well, just kind of destroying Mirror. And with Merritt's holding on to this pulse, one might need to use it, throws it out anyway, forces the cleanse. Now someone is in, no ult, no, and so many problems. No. That terror surge right on top of someone. That's Meteor huge. strike you straight in that room too, and it didn't pick up any kills. Merritt does end up going down as the bot continues to move for Toronto to find. Shook Free gets chased away, but with the trade of tanks, this is going to be good for Defiant. They actually push on forward with the sound barrier, so that means Zera can't even try and contend with this payload. Are they going to be able to get checkpoint? Doesn't look like it. And it looks like Zara is going to find uh, his way into the fight as someone does rejoin the Defiant. Yeah. The Defiant just want to hold high ground here, and they, they are going to have the Kitsune Rush advantage here, right? So it's just like, can they kind of like bait them into a fight, maybe in the low ground, or maybe LFO trying to challenge up high and end up using this rush and getting a clean sweep? Just a juggling bot right now. Again, this rush just has to be pulled. The Seeker's now got that overclock. Getting him to the high ground will be quite important, or he can just uh, go for the flank. A double hit on the Lucio, but it's not quite enough to find the kill. And now he's trying to find the heads. The rush has been pulled, Matt, and RuPaul is being able to heal everybody up. Seeker on the high ground, still a little bit too scared to peek, however. RuPaul just uh, going a little bit invulnerable there with a the Suzu, making sure Seeker can't uh, turn him to paste, as they've once again ended up flipping the point almost. Vega going super low, but still worming his way out of the fight. Vega has got nine lives and them some it feels like a later rush here from LFO as MCD pulls it under the bridge and they find the kill onto Merit. 
Yeah, I really like, though, how LFO kind of, like, circumvented uh, the Kitsune rush that came out, right? We were looking at that as, like, a huge win condition, a big advantage for the Defiant. Uh, they end up popping the rush, and then LFO is able to, like, speed out, get to, like, the opposite side of the map, uh, and end up winning that fight in the end. So, uh, look at this. You just get a spear on someone, get him weak. But I think the biggest thing is dodging Sugar Free with this focusing beam. Is, uh, that has been crazy. Is this going to be a Tracer duplicate? It's going to be a sound barrier response for LFO that only connects with three. It does, but it does get them out of there. I'm curious if Sugar Free is even going to get a free pulse bomb here. 60%. Looks like LFO playing a, a little bit timid right now, but I would as well. If I was against uh, Sugar Free's duped Tracer with free pulse bombs. Oh, MCT narrowly getting away from that focusing beam. Just walking away as Sugar Free basically AFK and looked at it. Oh, the way he just suzu and stood there. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no, he, well, he was walking, bro. He was holding, uh, he was holding S. All right, someone tries to go for over engage. The rush from RuPaul, it's just not finding anything. These last couple of fights, it's just full flat. Yeah, it's, uh, no, the, the, this Arissa has looked really good against the dive. Uh, so you were like, okay, maybe it's Maga. Maybe there's some other things that they've tried. They tried the Queen on uh, you know, Ilios uh, against the Defiant. The Defiant on the Sigma at that time. But with someone on the Doom, it's really been this Arisa now for LFO that, that has given them a, a, a lead here. No, not a huge lead, right? 13 meters and counting. Uh, but a lead with under two minutes to go here on push. I mean, uh, pretty nice stuff here from LFO. Yeah, and the checkpoint too, worth keeping in mind which uh gives them forward spawns which is always nice and they just need to stall out here's so all they need to do there is the rush from mcd and now they can push any kills here for toronto to find would be nice but lfo if they find one or two it will be disaster bt strike coming in mirror trying to escape but not today oh actually i take it back i'm sorry mirror i wasn't familiar with your game Sugar Free ends up going down. Mirror was 1 HP and someone slammed into him with a Meteor Strike and did almost no damage. Mirror and LFO are going to now charge on forwards. Railgun in hand, same with that Pulse Bomb. Toronto Defiant can't come up with any answers to this test. LFO are putting them through. Yeah, Mirror actually like kind of doubled up on the Fortify there. Fortify then ended up using the Terror Surge just to get that extra Fortify oh, just to like stick. live. It's a what nice a stick there. That's actually going to be Sugar for using the duplicate to negate that. So Sound Barrier on both sides here. It's a huge fight for the Defiant. How do, okay, how, I was going to say, how does Vega get out of that one? Luckily, he doesn't. Lyra was there to help him out. Here's Rupal's rush yet again. And finally, the raid boss is dead. Loot everywhere. Liar, Mirror, Zera, finally they fall. But uh, what cost, Matt? 30 seconds to oh, go. Mean... LFO have managed to stall out basically this entire map on this point right here. And they've definitely, look, you go to a, you go to a Flashpoint map, right? You can definitely run this Aresis type of setup. So maybe we have a, a series on our hands here, but LFO still has to close it out. So uh ahead by you know a healthy margin it's not like a you know crazy dominating you know unbelievable kind of comeback scenario here for the defiant they can still definitely do this looks like we're gonna have a quick listen with lfo in the last couple of moments of this game we'll see how they feel wait wait make me carry on me i'm with you i'm fighting with you nice nice one more one more Oh, nice. Yeah. This is the first map they've lost. Oh. 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 This is the first map that they lost. Only W's from here from LFO. Let them know. Let them know. Wow, that was a, a ridiculous turnaround. Considering how maps one and two went, Matt, like, what was that? That was a completely different team. Uh, LFO, LFO on map two. I mean, map one, they got they got kind of dominated. Uh, you know, map number two, they had an opportunity to take that second checkpoint. They just kind of, you know, two minutes, 30 plus eye on the clock, and they just kind of like dropped the, the ball there. Uh, this one, it felt like they were in a commanding spot from start yeah. to finish uh, in what a lot of people thought was probably going to be the you know, biggest blowout here in round one uh, in NA. Looks like it could be a pretty competitive match. Uh, and we, we already have, what's crazy is we already have two other series in this first round of winners already done. Right. Uh, no, uh, M80 gets a 3-0 over students of the game and Luminosity gets a 3-0 win as well. Uh, which is, uh, you know, you, you kind of expected 
uh, Toronto to come in, you know, b make clean work of LFO, but they put up a pretty good fight. Yeah, I mean, this could really just go all the distance now as we're going on to Flashpoint. And it feels like the Arista's just working. Also, yeah. I, I would say on the flip side of that too, that Doom was not working at all. I'm surprised we well, didn't see a little bit more Winston there because someone is kind of known for the Winston play, but... There's also, um, you know, when you die four times in group play, mm. uh, you know, what is the quality of, like, kind of the the scrim or, you know, you're getting at the moment, right? Like, uh, you, you have to kind of, like, be challenged a little bit, like the worst competitions, like no competition, right? You're, like, not really getting better. You're just kind of... You know, existing which toronto is obviously awesome like i mean they, they could easily win the series 3-1 and we're just kind of going to move on with the day uh but you know having having other stiff competitions is going to make you better where you know maybe maybe they haven't been really tested that much playing that dude like they haven't really you know had any trouble regardless of what anybody else is doing and now you run up against a team with you know three four, four former overwatch league level players right and then now you, you kind of find yourself maybe in a little bit of trouble yeah i really like that it's like they just haven't been tested on some of these picks because you're just kind of running over everybody or you die four times in group play yeah that's a uh, four four times in, in like essentially like a mini double up. limb that's criminal like actually criminal like how is that yeah. even possible and then like you said yeah just like oh now i have double my deaths but it was one map or like two maps or whatever right like it's now ridiculous the defiant i mean this is a massive loss for them as they fall sure. to uh 26 and one That's for so their sad. overall map count this through so swiss sad. and groups in the main event i mean you know uh unbelievable uh no this is completely unacceptable uh but no i mean they're still incredible uh you know the, like they could easily win here on flashpoint i just uh, i think you see that maybe they are struggling a little bit going up against this arista based composition but you have some time here to maybe figure it out yeah i mean i'm sure kasaurus in the back uh, back room there is heading books just ready to go to the next map and just making sure they got the the perfect strat going and look yeah. if the doom's not working i mean they can definitely play whatever i mean someone's hero pool is basically limitless yeah. i mean honestly just stick on dps bro like i'm sure he can play that as well to the highest level like the guy is a nutcase and i think when it comes to the orissa maybe you just end up matching it because pound for pound you're thinking well toronto are probably just gonna be able to win that too but i mean hey Maybe LFO got some secret sauce. They got cooking. I don't know. Because uh, on Suravasa or like just any, or New Junk City or any kind of flashpoint map, you do really want to go fast. But I just don't think the Doom is really going to work here. Um, and if you are going to go dive, Monkey is just way better, especially in the different elevations of New Junk City. But we'll have to wait and see as we load in yeah. in just a second. I mean, what else is a potential option, right? You can go Winston, uh, you know, if you still want to play aggressive, if you want to play fast, like you can match the Arisa, which at least so far seems like they don't want to do. Uh, Sigma, I guess. Could you, you play can Sigma play and try and poke. Yeah, That's kind right. of like, you know, uh, Sigma with maybe like uh, the Sojourn in the mix, like Sojourn and then, you know, just throw a Tracer in there, right? You just throw a Tracer in every single comp and you're yeah, kind of like good to go. Um, where it may, you know either of those paths um you know if maybe if lfo wants to play a little bit more defensive you kind of just like poke constantly with the sigma and just slowly take up space um at least so far that looks like what toronto's probably gonna end up on yeah the poke wouldn't surprise me at all you can definitely play poke there was a time where people were only playing sick especially on these kind of maps but uh, LFO, it's up to them to really set the tempo here. They don't want to get poked out too much. The Sim is ex exceptional against the uh, against the Sigma, but it doesn't like a Tracer swap. No real surprises. As like you mentioned, Tracer is just OP OP. She's extremely good. For good reason, too. I mean, what? Uh, y you have Tracer and Lucio and then just spin a wheel on everything else, pretty much. And you're, <laughs> yeah. you're in a decent spot. You're good to go. That was a really early cooldown uses from Mira. Yeah, I was going to say, Fortify running at them, Spear Spin. That was a lot used almost instantly. And I mean, Toronto Defiant basically got tickled there. And wow, that's first fight. And Mira insta switches to Ram. <laughs> But where LFO is having success with the Arisa, right, is, you know, not being the team that's going to go first, like, you know, kind of just like playing a little bit slowly, uh, in, just kind of like playing in that type of area. And with the Arisa trying to go in, that's when the Sigma can just kind of like do loads of damage, the accretion, the shield, the kinetic grass, like soak up all that damage. If you're going to play aggressive, now the answer is Ramatra. Yeah, Ram is definitely good, especially playing Brawl. Not as hardy as the Arisa is, but 
and he pulls out those fists. It can be quite devastating. But MCD already dead. Okay, LFO have to make a decision now. They've got to go fast. They've got to try and end this fight or die because we're already up to 50%. Looks like they're going to choose hmm. the former. It's just They're, they're going to be able to do both. They're going to end the fight and die. Uh, um, that's so they're so end the fight from via you. death. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to get a two for one there, Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to die and end that fight. That is... Uh, they'll be able to bounce back here uh you're you're, you're in position to probably just give this one up yeah i mean you just leave. you're in a pretty terrible spot for lfo I mean, you're not close to any ultimates i mean you're gonna you know Heck oh. lose this first flash point genji like was the one to touch yeah, yeah zera i heard the deflect in my ear uh yeah you're, you're dead you de he dashed into deflected before he hit the floor by the sounds of it and yeah that's a uh... That's point over. It felt like he you just also go to next fight on that one because you just gave Toronto the final charge. But I mean, they were close. To well, anyway. I mean, they already had all, so yeah, there's right, really yeah. you're really not giving up anything else. If anything, you're just trying to like make the fight long. Like you know, you get first pick there, right? Maybe they're forced to use an ultimate or two. Yeah. Uh, and then you come back with a slight advantage in your end, but still, it's going to be LFO you know, way far behind in this next. You know, you're almost going to lose this second checkpoint basically off of that too. You should also catch them on the rotate, to be fair, if you did end up backing off. You don't want the SIG team to set up, which is exactly what Toronto Fine want to do right here, right now. Point unlocks. Toronto already capping. That is Sugar Free on points. Kitsune Rush, speaking of which. Oh, Sugar Free, unfortunately, forced to recall there. There's a later rush pulled by MCD. Seeker on the high ground, trying to find some railgun headshots. And that's enough to dissuade Toronto, at least for the time, as someone tries to rotate up to the high ground. Lie with the sound barrier available, ready for this flux. Seeker already taking care of merits, though, as both sound barriers have been thrown out. Seeker gets pulse bomb rocked. All good, though. <laughs> Suzu moment as he is saved from everything. Uh, now, Toronto Defiant have to turn tail and run. Vega pretty low as LFO continue to hold the point. I mean, that's got to be a trip for Seeker, right? I know Overclock goes in, gets brought up in the sky by the Flux, Ooh. then hit Good with rock. a Pulse Bomb as uh, this is going to be Dr Dragon Blade here from Zira as that's going to be LFO winning yet another fight and this is where i think the defiant where their comp will struggle a little bit yeah is, is moving directly into kind of uh this ramatra so someone busting out the best skin in the game there on a recent 100 oh, get that rubber duck going it goes crazy rubber ducky you love to see it. I want more. You of those should games. cosplay uh, Rubber Ducky Arisa at Dallas. Yeah, I should do that, Matt. Uh, maybe you can help me put the cosplay together. I know you're very good in the uh, the stitching department. I, I'm excellent with cardboard. I can. <laughs> well, that's the overclock from Merritt. Not finding too much success. Did find the head of Mirror, but was blocking. And here comes the Ram. That annihilation doing a fair bit of work, but Mirror already going pretty low. Merritt struggling to find anything here. In fact, it's Seeker. Sojourn extraordinaire that's finding infinitely more than merits. I mean, it's kind of insane. Two of the best Sojourns in the world facing off against each other. And Seeker right now is just lights out over uh, Merit currently. Nice point take from LFO. Quick rotation here is uh, Toronto to fight uh, just all the way back in spawn. Yeah, and you're going to get sick value out of the Ramatra ult, right? If they have to push into the point in a close vicinity and then contest it, uh, Mir just pops the Annihilation, then just, you know, does the, the, the block and just stands there basically the entire time, just soaking up loads of damage on the point. I tell you what, Jack, this is a huge fight for the Defiant. I feel like you got to win this fight. You lose this one here to LFO. You, you give them a position, maybe you know, take a second flash point. Uh, and then you're you're like even worried about a game five. Pulse bomb in the hands of Sugar Free. Seeker just high in the sky. Wow, it just got picked out. It's like uh, Mero's going duck hunting there. Both sound barriers have been used too. There's Sugar Free just hounding down the back line. These rush fights. There was two rush, two sound barriers. But it will be Toronto to find winning that out. And I think more importantly here, this railgun for LFO is going to be the difference maker. He has to find big value. You know RuPaul, Vega do not have ults here. You've only got one Suzu to kind of save your front line. Seeker is going to be the one for LFO to try and turn this one around because Toronto also going to want to go quickly with this Terra Surge. 
Well, you're also going to have this Dragon Blade here, where because you end up using your sound barrier, Vega ends up dropping his in the last fight. This is going to be the Terra Surge there from someone. Yeah, just He's trying to put down some damage. Get some good damage on a zero and Seeker, but yeah, he gets healed up right away. Yeah, almost instantly. And there's the overclock for everybody carrying a corner. I would be too, to be fair. A couple of little body shots there from Seeker, but not too much. But the space was created enough, at least, to get the point. There's the blade from Zera straight to the back line. Slashes adorned by an extra bit of damage from the rest of his team. Sugar Free comes up with a clean two with a pulse and just a, a pulse pistol kill onto Zera, but I don't think it will matter. Tried to turn it around, but Toronto to fine and have fallen over 62% as Hugo seems to agree with us. Yeah, I mean, Hugo is just hyped. Anytime he sees a dragon blade on broadcast, he is absolutely nuts. Uh, he also goes absolutely nuts if anyone stand, if anyone is vicinity of, you know, the the home. He also goes nuts. Uh, but this time, it's definitely for that blade. As uh, this will be Mary with the overclock. Oh, there's a chance for a triple collapse there. I was ready to relive one uh, very, very fun moment back from 2022, but uh, not to be. But I mean, the collateral damage was still there for Merit. Luckily, what a clean fight from Toronto to find a dangerous flip position too, as LFO are in one fight territory of this point now. Yeah, but it's not going to be the worst fight. Like, you think you think with the Orisa, you're able to get to the point, uh, and then you're going to have double support alt here. Double support with the Terra Surge, so you kind of get that extra Fortify from Mira to live. So, LFO still in this. And also, uh, you know, we're still going to have another Flashpoint to play no matter what. Oh, nice headshot there on a RuPaul. That was nice, yeah. Map. Is he already going pretty low? Has to... Uh... Oh, okay. Walking through a disruptor shot with random spheres being thrown at you. Yeah, we're going to the next point. That's a very unfortunate death. You saw MCD was kind of looking one way to help Zara and then straight back and then disrupt shot spheres and just all the spam. All right, two and one. Toronto Defiant firmly in the lead. This could just be the series here. Zelifo's last chance to come back and take us to another map. Yes, uh, th this next point is going to be kind of just similar as how the last one kicked off, right? Both teams ended up just investing all their support ults at the beginning of that fight uh, with our last flash points where they're going to have the same exact setup here yet again as uh, MCD just takes a huge shot coming around that corner there. And, you know, once you lost your Kariko, uh, you're, I mean, you're screwed, right? I mean, Suzu's so important and also the rush. It's going to be a tough way to enter, especially across this long bridge. Perfect position to plant the rush, like you said. Point and lock. Sugar Free contesting, but Seeker trying to... Oh, that was close. That railgun narrowly giving Sugar Free a haircut there. There's the rush. It's actually on the point now. Is uh, now trying to define. Really can't drop in. I mean, Sugar Free there to contest for a little bit, but LFO more than happy to take that trade. Second rush this time from RuPaul puts uh, Toronto to find on the point, and they end up capping. That has got to be the <laughs> shortest percent I've ever seen on Flashpoint, and 8% on Flashpoint. Here's the overclock. Okay, LFO's chance now to get onto the point and find the flip randomly. However, sound barrier from the side of Toronto to find didn't quite hit someone who's still pretty low. Merritt ends up just taking to the skies and taking the high ground away from C but it's actually MCD who's filling the kill feed. Zara with a nice melee kill onto Merit as Toronto still hold the point. As LFO, they continue these trades in their favor as uh, Toronto, well, nice stick, but uh, sugar free, I don't think it's gonna mean all too much. No recall and uh, no help as they end up backing off. I mean, both teams just go round and round on the point. <laughs> I mean, you know, one drops down, does a rush, then they give it, the other team gives oh, it up. Die. The next thing happens is uh, they're putting a lot of pressure. I mean, that's a huge kill there. And uh, look who's back. It's Mir back on the MAGA. So uh, <laughs> high ground being able to do some damage here. And that's huge. I mean, that's going to give them the lead there, that death uh, from Sugar Free. Yeah, easily. Yeah, that death was so late. Tracer, so they will get back quickly. But I mean, still. They're worrying a little bit, I'd imagine now. Look how fast they're going. Blades pulled. So <laughs> what the flux do? I think it's already done someone, unfortunately, son. Merit and Vega are already dead. Toronto Defiant still miraculously though, managed to cap the point. Just keep it going. Just keep everybody just keep flipping the point. Alright, 60 rough, roughly 60% for Toronto Defiant. Important flip though. They do uh, I maybe gain an extra fight there. LFO still trying to hold this one down. They cannot go down here, Matt. Otherwise the series will end. I wonder if LFO wants to get aggressive here behind this rush, right? It looked like they were gonna kind of play up a Looks little like bit closer wanted. here, but maybe, yeah, maybe once they drop. No, oh, here, come, yeah, here comes rush. the rush combo. With there the, is Audi, the bro. He's Audi 5000. He doesn't want anything to do with that fight. And Chicka Free's dead. Overtime here for LFO. A TP from RuPaul up to the high ground, but the point's already gone. Oh, nobody touched, yeah. 
this fight. <laughs> that is kind of... And now what? We have like a, a fight that's going to end up going LFO's favor <laughs> here, you know, on this last point. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the objective's now like the other side of the map. Uh, so, so we'll kind of get an idea. I mean, what? You build up some ultimates towards that? Uh, I mean, it's kind of a... Uh, a, a little bit of a dub there for LFO. What a silly uh, point. They have an opportunity here to force a game five. <laughs> yeah, they really do. Toronto Defiant. Well, looking for a game four first, I think. Oh, wait, no. There, this is map four. What am I saying? <laughs> wait, wait. I was like, wait, 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 wait. I was like, I was like, I was like, if Toronto thinks they're looking for a game four, they they don't realize that they're currently <laughs> yeah, in the wait, game wait, four, wait, which wait, wait. be a bit of a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I added the score line up, okay? I got caught out. My bad. My bad. Look, you're you're catching up. You know, you're you're about four weeks behind on sleep, uh, you know, <laughs> according to the broadcast, so. That's true. Thanks for making the excuse for me. All right, Rush. Overclock. No problem. Anytime. Mirror taking infinite damage in the front line, but all good. Sound barrier and, of course, Seeker just filling the kill feed. I mean, look, at the end of the day, especially with that sound barrier, Seeker has a little to no fear when he pulls the railgun, even more so when he has that overhealth. What a what a uh, clean fight, but Toronto already up to almost 60%. What do you do if you're Toronto here? Like, do you keep running this Arisa, just like head on into the MAGA? It feels like we kind of know how that's going to play out. Uh, it feels like them going Doom at this point in the game is not really an option, right? Um, it, it feels like you're kind of stuck on this uh, for at least the rest of the game, which, you know, with the way things are going, uh, you know, what, one, two more fights? Uh, I know it's probably it. Yeah, they definitely start right now. Alpha over tendency, yeah, to pull the rush first and instantly pop the blade. Looks like they want to try and find some straggle kills first. Trying to make this final fight or close to 55%. Good disengage from Toronto. We're taking a lot of damage, but here comes the cage. I'd imagine there's a blade too. Vega up in the skies! Oh, <laughs> almost hit the Ajax, but it's all good. My heart leapt, and I'm sure so did his. His duplication from Sugar Free could be, la could be rather large, but I don't think it's going to need to be after that terror surge from someone just tears everybody asunder. Toronto Defiant, a heart racing couple of seconds there. Managed to win that team fight. LFO, though, put themselves in a good spot. 88% now to Toronto Defiant. 70. Yeah, and a lot used there for the Defiant, right? Uh, no, Terror Surge, Duplicate, and Sound Barrier. Uh, you can come back for LFO. What do you have? Just this you know, cage fight? I mean, Zero's going to switch over to the Tracer here just to kind of like get a touch. Also, Tracer way better against the Echo than that Genji is. It'll be Zero to get a touch to send us an OT. OT's here. Mirror. It's just like so much damage. I mean, that's going to be the big problem. There's the rush from RuPaul. Zero trying to find an entrance. Well, the cage fight does get deployed back, but it only catches someone. He just hits the instant fortify. Looks like Mary's trying to get out of Dodge rather fast, using that rush to get away. But Toronto Defiant, they're going to have it their way this time around. They're going to wipe LFO. And what could have been a map number five is cut rather short. Toronto Defiant taking that series three to one. I tell you what, though, all, I mean, obviously a great performance from Toronto Defiant. I also think LFO is going to be really difficult for some teams to beat. Uh, you know, we, we know that Mirror uh, didn't really see it throughout this series, but we know he can play, you know, the aggressive style of tanks like you know, the Doomfist. And then you also saw really nice play on the Arisa in the MAGA. I think uh, some nice things from Zero in the support. So uh, big win for Toronto Defiant. Also a win against like a quality team, right? You know, they're just not... You know, be beaten up on, you know, uh, people like Johnny signing up, you know, with their friends, right? Uh, they're, 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 this is a real team that uh, Toronto handled today. <laughs> Get out of the shop, what? man. Go back to your Hey, desk. bro, you're, you're, yo, uh, yeah, c come over here and see, see what's up. Yeah. <laughs> try, and, try and flex through the screen. It's like Zoltron over here just <laughs> taunting people. <laughs> and they, they cut the screen. I couldn't see. <laughs> 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 they want you on camera, yeah. Johnny. You're not paid enough. Get out of here. All right. Take it away, <laughs> Des. Toronto win that 3-1. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, oh, Shaza. Dear. Thanks, uh, Mr. X as well. Uh, but, hey. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say, I think I was pretty impressed with LFO because yeah, like, Toronto Defiant, they won every single map, and they, this is their first time losing a map. Yeah. To show David, someone's got to be David to show that Goliath can bleed. I feel like, honestly, this, these LFO guys, there's serious shooters on this team. I think every player mechanically is super strong. Right. Um, 
And when it comes to, to the real challenge here is just how much backing is behind this Toronto squad. Yes, the players are extremely good, but they've got coaches, they've got analysts, they've got support and resources. And for LFO to play them as close as they did, almost taking us to a map five, right? I felt maybe it would go that direction. Me too. Um, <laughs> Johnny, for me, for me, that's really exciting. Did you get anxious? At any point in that series, did you get like anxious for Toronto? No, not really. Because I knew, I knew, right? Like honestly, guys, I was saying this backstage. Like, if they go escort, it's really rough because Toronto's gonna take you to like circuit or something and make you play a Sigmir. And you know, I think that's gonna be really rough. Escort in particular is gonna be a game type that will, I think, really allow Toronto to shine. These brawlier, more deathmatchy game types, though, we do get to see how good individually the LFO players are, mm -hmm. and with time. They could even be a, a team to contend, right, with someone like the Toronto Defiance of um, NA. But as of now, not not quite yet, and we can see enough. I mean, how not enough good for Toronto, Toronto looks like. It. It's like for me, this I don't criticize LFO though. After this game, I still feel like this was yeah. great. I love this little play here though from Vega, dancing all alone. <laughs> Ju look, they give up on the kill. They're baby. like, this isn't worth it anymore. <laughs> like, they come at the cops pushing. Them. We've got to go to the objective, and then they just get clapped by someone. Unfortunate for them. Yeah, I I think you, you gotta look at LFO. There's so many experienced individuals on this team, like you said. I mean, Overwatch League level, so they clearly understand, you know, everything it takes to to, mm. to win a team fight against some of the best teams in the world, right? But I, I again, I thought I thought these these turn to fight matches are so entertaining because Toronto Defiant arguably has the most pressure on them of any Overwatch team maybe ever because they have this incredible backing, right? This mm -hmm. this roster was hand-picked by Casores in the off-season when no other teams had really been put together because Toronto Fiant can offer so much when it comes to, um, you know, benefits, you, you know, when it comes to preparing for the OWCS, right? So obviously they get the 3-1 win here today, sugar-free, player of the match, much deserved, but LFO gave them a series. They yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Respect to them. And I want to see them back. I want to see them, you know, fighting that oh, lower, yeah. those lower bracket matches. I think not many teams are going to want to be up against LFO. Uh, Mirror, I think, is able to be in a really great comfort zone this meta with a lot of those deathmatch heavy mechanics, heavy heroes. Who, do you think there's a team that could match Toronto Defiant in the NA region? I think it, uh, you got to look at M80 just because of like the name value of the players right. on M80. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, if you've been spectating some of the scrims, um, you know, we've got co-streamers out there co-streaming some of these scrims. Uh, Toronto Defiant, they have been given, you, you know, some, 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 some tough scrims once in a while. Also, uh, shout out to Timeless, uh, who they might be playing in the next round. I'm not quite sure if Timeless uh, finished their maps against the Paris in Pajamas. But Timeless and M80, I think those are the two other teams you'd look at uh, in, in this region that could compete with the Toronto Defiant. So, by all means, I don't think Toronto Defiant, even though they are the number one team in the region, I don't think that they uh, should count themselves, you know, they're not untouchable. By far, OP. they're not untouchable, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they did get touched. I, I want right. to show love to the students <laughs> of the game as well as LG. I think both of those squads as yeah. well are pretty competitive. I think in contrast to EMEA, where the top, you know, three are really have differentiated themselves, I feel like in NA, there is a pretty hot competition, even for teams like Toronto Defiant, who, who might be the overdog, but I still think you've, you've got to you, you take your competition seriously. And I think they have been, though, to their credit. Yeah. Is overdog a word? I don't know. I just made I, it's a word. Now. Like under, over, I Language think. is common usage, so if you understand it, it is a word. All right. I mean, well, talking I about words, we got to hear a word from the myth, the legend. Uh, we got someone from Toronto Defiant for an interview. Who, who is it oh, you're moving. Someone. Someone. You're right. moving. Screen, <laughs> uh, I I've been, I've been so much. I've been doing this for here a couple of years. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit rusty. I took a couple of months off. But anyways, yes, he is here. Someone from Toronto Defiant. Hello, uh, someone. Congratulations on getting the win. And, you know, it's good seeing you back. So, first, I'm going to give you a big round of applause. I'm going to give you a big round Ah, 네, 안녕하세요. <laughs> Alright, someone says hello. Uh, let's jump right into my question. So, uh, I mean, you guys are definitely considered as one of the strongest teams in the NA region. And because of that, you know, there's people are, are gunning for you guys. They're like trying to put you guys down. Does that sort of affect your gameplay, do you feel like? Do you feel pressure to perform? So, the first question is, we're going to talk about the region of the Toronto team. The Toronto Defiant is the most important team in the region. So, do you have a lot of pressure to perform? Do you have a lot of 치를 때 이런 게좀 어떻게 멘탈적으로 좀 영향이 있나요? 어 저희가 잘하면은 물론 1등을 할수 있다 생각하지만 그 뭐야 사람들의 평가는 저, 저는 그렇게 막 생각을 안 하고 어 저는 진짜 지금은 도전자 입장에서 어 성장하려고 노력 중입니다. 
Yeah. Of course, I mean, we, if we play uh, well, well enough, and if the record shows that, of course, we could get the first place. But uh, right now, I'm not trying to think about what others think of us or what others think about how we play uh, in game. Uh, you know, we're trying to, we're going in as challengers as well. So we're all starting from the same place, and we're uh, trying our best to grow as a team uh, as well for the OWCS. All right. I also want to ask you about uh, your teammates. You know, you have great uh, teammates that are playing alongside you. Uh, most of them are from the Overwatch League, but there's Vega, who is a brand new face uh, that's joining your team in the Toronto Defiance. So how is it like playing with Vega? He was a great, fantastic Lucio today. So I just want to hear your thoughts on Vega. 자, 두 번째 질문으로는 일단 이제 팀원들 중에서 굉장히 잘하는, 대단한 선수들이 굉장히 많은데 아무래도 이제 새로운 얼굴이죠. 베가 선수가 어, 제가 봤을 때는 되게, 되게 너무나 잘하는 힐러 선, 어, 선수이고 또 어떻게 좀 이런 합을 맞추는 데 대해서 아무래도 좀 어, 더 어린 선수기 때문에 좀뭐 어떠신가요? 좀 새로 새로 오신가요? 어, 네. 일단 베가가 생, 어, 생각보다 많이 열정적이고 그리고 이제 얘가 피지컬이 애초에 좋아, 좋다 보니까 어, 서브 힐러, 플렉스 힐러도 되는 것 같고 그래서 좀팀 분위기 좀잘 살려 주는 것 같아요. 음. Definitely, Vega is very, he is very passionate and he definitely has the skills to back up uh, his passion as well. Um, you know, he's just a great uh, flex support. Um, he's, a, he's a really great support player that could also play uh, flex support heroes as well. So he is very versatile and also he's just a great guy. Uh, really brings up the vibe when we're in matches as well. All right, one final question. Uh, I know there are a lot of great teams in the NA region right now. Uh, someone, is there a team that you are looking out for uh, in the region? 자, 마지막 질문으로 일단 저희 또 북미 쪽에 굉장히 잘하는 쟁쟁한 팀들이 많기 때문에 서먼 선수가 이게 한 팀을 꼽자면 좀 이제 라이벌 아니면 좀 이제 아이 팀은 정말 잘하는 것 같다라는 팀이 있을까요? 어뭐 아직 대회를 많이 못 봐서 모르겠는데 솔직히 아직까지 저희가 잘하면 없는 것 같아요. 너희가 잘한 아, 토론토만큼 잘하는 팀이 없다. 네. Alright. Um, I can't really say for sure because I haven't seen a lot of matches, but I I would say I believe you know I don't think anyone comes close to the Toronto Defiant level. Loving that answer. That is it for the interview. So much. Thank you so much, and I'm hoping to see more of your great plays moving forward. 자 인터뷰 감사드리면서 여기서 끝마치도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you. I don't know, Jay. Just hearing Danny saying Ah, Swingy, you got the rhythm, so Ah, it gives me it gives me goosebumps. <sighs> That was great, dude. Like My Korean's still there. <laughs> My English, not not so far. It's okay, but Korean's there.